the, the advantage of a proprietary network at the end of the day is that a single vendor will take a given standard and then add on extensions, and that's what makes it proprietary. Vendors take standards so that they can interoperate with other systems, but then they will add on extensions that make networks faster, more manageable, more secure, more reliable. And, and those are all features that are not pushed by the vendors. These are features that are desired by the end user, and, and, and that's really why vendors go out and implement those features. But you can always turn off the proprietariness of the feature set and just use the basic common standard for connectivity. But I, I don't think that's really what, what's going to happen. I think the wireless networks are, by their very nature, single vendor networks. And because they're single vendor networks, um, proprietary features are a desired outcome by CIOs, by the different users. And I think you will continue to see that at least over the next decade or so. Because you, you hear about the frustration of people with the iPhones who would love to have it, but they don't necessarily want to go to AT&T. Yes. So you have to wait for a competitor to come out with a similar kind of product for you to use, or I guess if you can tinker with it, some people have done that to use other networks, but that's not a really practical solution for most people. Uh, yes, yeah, specific to the iPhone, that's actually limited by the software in terms of the service that you can pick. But the wireless LAN itself or the underlying technology you can really connect to any network. It is uh, Apple and AT&T that have sort of jointly decided we're not going to let people, you know, do do this because of their specific business model that they have in place. Um, but technology enables everything. It enables all equally. It is sort of, you know, it's a good start for everybody, and then you can decide once you have the basic technology in place whether you want a specific feature that, that a vendor offers or you don't. For example, and I'll get into a bit of technology uh, weeds here, uh, something called AES-128 bit encryption. It's sort of fairly standard uh, encryption, and what Proxim offers, for example, is 256-bit encryption. Now, that's a higher, much higher level of, level of encryption. But you can get it at the basic 128 if you want. And so users can decide, well, you know, do I want the 256, which, which ties me into a Proxim solution, or do I want the 128, which may be interoperable with other vendors? And that's really a trade-off between what is more important to you, security or interoperability. And I think these are trade-offs that users make all the time. And these are good trade-offs to make because it, 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 it enables discussion uh, and it enables uh, the right product choices uh, from coming to the market.